What is going on guys, NJ2005 Gundam here, and today I'm going to be reviewing the High Grade Amazing Strike Freedom Gundam from Gundam Build Fighters Amazing Ready. So, this is Meijin's version of the Strike Freedom Gundam, and actually it is pretty amazing. The design is completely unique from the original Strike Freedom, and to be honest, the color palettes, they are amazing as well. This is one gripe I have about this kit. The color palettes. It completely differs from the League Gundam designs. But I have a few gripes about this kit. First off, the, the amount of parts I have to glue in in order to let them make them stay. By glue, I mean heat glue. First off, the V-fin. Second, the crotch piece. Three and four, the fins on the rail guns over here. And that is it. I, I really did not expect that I would need to glue that much stuff on. So the uh, build isn't like to my liking. I don't know about these issues. It may just be the luck of the draw. But feel free to tell me about your issues you have with the Amazing Strike Freedom Gundam. As for stickers, you have the dual head cameras. Then the eyes, you have silver ones for the clear pieces. And then you have one at the back of the head. And then you have the red ones inside of the binders. You have the yellow one over here. You have the blue ones for the scopes of the cannons. And then you have this gigantic red trim over here. So that's all the details for the Amazing Strike Freedom. For the articulation, it leaves something to be desired, especially in the head, because the head is in your, in your typical double ball jointed polycap, and the neck joint doesn't work. So when, whenever you try to point the head up, when you look up, the collar pops off with it. So I'm contemplating on gluing that in as well. And then the arms, they can rotate, they can come out a little bit. The arms can rotate above the elbow, go out this far, pop off, bend at the elbow at two joints, pretty good. Ball jointed wrist. Let's get the head out of the way. There is a peg waist over here because to counter the gigantic backpack. So it is pretty cool of them to include this. And they have two ball joints inside the chest for crunches. Front skirts can move, side skirts can move, back skirts can move. And then the legs can do the funky dance if you have your grip correctly. They can go forwards, backwards, all the way, supposedly. I'm holding on to the back skirt for some stupid reason. Go out, all the way, rotation at the hip, double joint knee. Looks weird because it's hollow down here. And then the feet, they can go forwards and back, side to side. Rotate a little bit, the token point down a little bit, and then the ankle guard can move. And then for the back pad, you have a double joint, double hinge at the cannon. You have ball joints for the lower wings over here. And then you have a rotation at the base, a hinge here, a hinge here, and a peg rotation at the binders. So all in all, the body is pretty amazing i would keep on using this word but the head leaves something to be desired especially if you're shooting your rifle in a flying pose your head is just constant constantly going to be looking down upon the meteorites so articulation except for the head it is pretty amazing for the accessories you have first off two open hands Generously left over by Bandai from the original Revive, Strike Freedom. And then you have the beam sabers. But there are no beams in this kit. So what I did is borrowed some uh, extra beams that I have. And these are the 2013 variety of beams. So if you have those, you can use it. And then you have the signature Gundam Seed feature. You can plug them together. 
to form like a javelin kind of stuff. And then they can be stored in the back skirt. Secondly, you have the cannons over here, overhead cannons, works on the double hinge, just comes up. And there you go, you're firing. And then you have the rail guns over here, fold out, no extension whatsoever, not a real great, it's fine. But I'm unsure about this gigantic chunk back here. Because it kind of obstructs the wings. Speaking of the wings, you have the dragoons. So the lower ones do not do anything on the body, so I assume all of the dragoons can fly out and attack. And it doesn't look half bad, you just need to paint the in interior metallic red and you have a perfect looking gun. And then you have the weapon binder over here. So the weapon binder can rotate to just fire directly. You can detach the dragoons, but it is kind of hard, but not impossible. Especially if you have done it a few times already. Same, you, pin, you need to paint metallic red inside to make it look perfect. I don't know if it's manga accurate, but hmm, that's just my advice. And you can remove it. You see the three pegs over here? Remove the red piece from the gauntlet and you have three holes. And, and I don't know why a piece of fluff is in there. Get away. And then you can peg it in like so. And use it as a dragoon shield. I don't know why Meijin go goes with this orientation because it has the potential of being a shield as well as a rifle but Meijin just denied that idea and this kind of looks like the wound wart do you agree? like the orientation reminds me of the TR6 wound wart I bet that is where the universal sentry element comes into this kit. And then finally, you have the beam rifle. The beam rifle resembles the functionality of the rifle, variable beam rifle of the Extreme Gundam Leo's Type 2 Versus. Just because it has the IOS funnels that come right into the barrel to fire at higher output. Same here. You can detach the Dragoons looks pretty bad without them so I'm just gonna put them on and you can just slide them to the hand like so and I bet the design of the rifle is also universal sentry and he also have the blue sticker for the scope so that is all the accessories of the Amazing Strike Freedom Gundam. For comparisons, I have to bring in Lady Kawaguchi's Luna Gazer Gundam. Yeah, she returned from Jupiter. These two are mixes of Universal Century and Cosmic Era mobile suits. Like the Luna Gazer is a mix of the Hyakushiki and the Stargazer. While I think the Amazing Strike Freedom Gundam is a mix of the Wound Wart and the Strike Freedom itself. And also the Cathedral because of the shoulder. And it doesn't deal well with weight issues in this position. Since Gundam Seed is in the past everybody's favorite Gundam series. I need to bring in the Gundam wall just to compare how much Iron Blood Orphans contrasts from the typical and original Gundam designs. So yeah, here you go. That is the review of the Amazing Strike Freedom Gundam. To be honest, I am pretty satisfied with this kit. Because I, I love the beam rifle, I love the cannons over here. I'm unsure about the rail guns because they're such a, a giant chunk. And I like that. And it's just basically, I like the strike freedom in general. This kit is amazing. <laughs> no pun intended. But 
I would recommend this to a just a regular builder builder, but I would not recommend this to beginners because the backpack is complicated and the chest you need to be careful of these two pieces, the basically the carpet hatch. And I and you need need to be careful of putting on the rail guns into the chest. Yeah, because you may have the risk of breaking them. But anyways, that is the review of the Amazing Strike Freedom Gundam. It is a pretty good kit in general, but I would say it is a take it or leave it situation here. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you did like, if you did like it, please be sure to drop a like, comment, and also subscribe for more gaming videos, modern reviews, and all that kind of stuff. Subscribe to Ultra Prime, AC videos, percentage, and plot model productions if you haven't, and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace out, guys. Bye-bye.